This is the Apple iPhone 17 Pro disassembly. This is the eSIM version, so there is no SIM tray to be removed. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, there are two pentalope screws on the bottom which need to be removed. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the screen using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then either a suction cup can be used to help lift up and pry off the screen, or you can use a mobile phone opener and clamp tool like this Refox RS51. Not everyone will have this tool laying around, but for people who often do repairs, this tool will definitely come in handy. With the Refox RS51, all you do is lift up the arm, place your smartphone on the cushioned plate, rotate the lever to tighten the grip on the phone, lower the arm back down, adjust the suction cup tool, and then engage the suction cup, and rotate the top knob to carefully lift up the arm. What's good about this tool is that once you're done with your repairs, you can place your smartphone back in the lower or bottom section of this tool, and insert the rotating knob or lever in the center, and lower the press plate to apply pressure on the screen to keep the screen pressed down and reapply the new adhesive. Once the screen is loose from the frame, it can be lifted over from the right to the left, but be careful since the cables are still attached to the main board. There are two Phillips screws which need to be removed that are holding down the metal plates over the connectors for the battery cable and screen cables. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. Here's a look at the back of the screen. There's graphite film behind the screen to help transfer heat. There's a tri-tip or tri-wing screw, which is holding down the metal plate over the secondary microphone and sensor. Fourteen T5 or Torx 5 screws are holding down the mid plate, which is adhered to the battery. Looking at the mid plate, there is graphite film to help transfer heat. The battery is adhered to the back side with an electrically conductive adhesive. So a 9 volt battery will be connected with alligator clips to the bottom tab of the battery as well as the mid plate. This will debond the adhesive underneath the battery. This is the 4,252 milliamp hour battery. With the battery removed, we can see additional graphite film as well as the vapor chamber. Three tri-wing screws need to be removed. The three T5 or Torx 5 screws holding the camera assembly down can be removed and the camera assembly can be lifted out. Here's a better look at the 48 megapixel ProFusion camera system. This consists of the 48 megapixel main, ultra wide, and telephoto lens. The main camera has a second generation sensor shift optical image stabilization and the telephoto camera has a 3D sensor shift optical image stabilization. This is the 18 megapixel front facing camera, as well as the dot projector and face ID camera.
The three Phillips screws which are holding on the top earpiece speaker assembly need to be removed. Here's a better look at that. And there is a rubber gasket over the earpiece speaker opening. This tri-tip screw, as well as this one, need to be removed. Once the 5G millimeter wave antenna cover has been removed, the 5G millimeter wave antenna can be peeled off, and it's being held on with some adhesive. The motherboard can now be lifted over, but be careful since the flex cable for the wireless charging coil is still attached underneath the board. There's a tri-tip or tri-wing screw which needs to be removed. Here's a better look at the motherboard. We can see graphite foam over the shield to help transfer heat, as well as rubber gaskets around the connectors. And here's a better look at the 5G millimeter wave antenna. And not all versions of this phone will have the 5G millimeter wave antenna, since most regions just use the sub 6 GHz 5G. And this also makes a slight difference in the process of the teardown between those two models. Looking at the back of the board, we can see additional graphite film over the back shield. There's a Phillip and standoff screw which are holding on the LiDAR sensor. Here's a look at that. On the bottom, we'll start off by removing 9 Phillips screws. Now two standoff screws need to be removed. And here's a look at the Taptic engine or vibrator motor. Two additional Phillips screws are holding on the bottom speaker assembly. This is the bottom speaker assembly. And there's a rubber gasket over the speaker opening. If you needed to replace the charger port flex cable, which does have antenna contacts, as well as the dual microphones on the bottom, there is an additional standoff screw, as well as tri-wing and Phillips screws which need to be removed in order to lift up and remove the flex cable. There are also Phillips screws on the inside rim of the frame which need to be removed. The same goes for the antenna assembly on top, this flex cable assembly, as well as Phillips screws which are holding the metal plates for the flex cables for the buttons on the sides of the phone. If you happen to crack the back glass and needed to replace that, all you need to do is apply some heat and gently pry off the back glass, which will also give you access to removing the screw and the cover for the flex cable of the wireless charging coil which is connected to the back side of the board. So if you need to replace the wireless charging coil or this back glass assembly which is adhered to the wireless charging coil, you wouldn't have to take apart the rest of the phone. As for the glass camera lens covers, those are glued in place. To replace those, just apply some heat and pry those off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 7 out of 10. Some parts are a bit easier to replace compared to the previous year models. However, other parts are a bit more difficult. Now it's time to put the phone back together.
Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the screen. Power it on and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.